most people, when, when they start doing a portrait, they're thinking in details right from the beginning. You can't get a brush small enough to make the painting. When the truth is, if you watch anyone who knows how to paint a portrait, they're taking out two inch brushes to get it started. They're not working with these tiny little one haired brushes trying to paint the pores and the skin. They start with these overarching shapes. Now, I, I wanna show you just how irrelevant the details are compared to the structure. A simple cube has say one shadow and two light shades, one on the side and one on the top. A face could be broken down into one shadow shade and one light shade. Now we'll start and we'll think in terms of grayscale to show you how powerful just the two shades and some gradients and sharp edges are. I want you to think about like your high school yearbook, right? And again, some of you, you like my age, your high school yearbook is in black and white. So <clears throat> stop laughing. <laughs> anyway, so, um, but your high school yearbook is in black and white. And like for me, my high school yearbook's 32 years old, something like that, <clears throat> 34 years old maybe. I can look back in my high school yearbook and look at my football team and the heads are like this big. They're made up of maybe 12 pixels in grayscale. And I'm able to recognize people from 35 years ago off an image. I can't see their eyes. I can't see their nose. I can't see their mouth. All I can see is the overall structure of the head and not even under good lighting. But the structure of the head is enough for me to recognize somebody from 35 years ago. And if you go and you check out your yearbooks, you, again, not like the regular photographs, but like the team photographs, terrible, out of focus, you know, from 25 feet away, little heads, but you'll recognize people. That shows you what matters in creating a, a, a recognizable portrait, a portrait that looks like the person. Those photographs don't require any details to be successful for you to recognize the person. And so when we paint a portrait, even in large scale, it's not the eyes and the nose and the mouth. It's not the details. It's not razor stubble. It's not individual hairs. It's the bone structure in the head that makes the person look the way they look. The eyes, the nose and the mouth, they're decorative. They're like earrings. They really are decorative. <clears throat> And if you go and you look at John Singer Sargent, even portraits by guys like Zorn, you'll see that a lot of these paintings, particularly in the shadows, they don't even, they barely even hint at an eye or a nostril, something, just leave it out completely. It doesn't matter because it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually have anything to do with the structure of the head. And your brain will fill in the blanks if the structure of the head is done well, right? And you can go, again, you can go look, even look at impressionist work. And, um, and look at paintings of people where they have people at a, at a parade or something like that. And you see them in the background and it's like, they're just like six strokes and it's a face. And you know that if you walk that, that, that parade, that little six stroke face, you could actually find the person and pull them out of the crowd because it's so crystal clear what they look like, even though there are no eyes or any, any details. Okay. And that's really a beautiful thing. Like when you, when you're doing a portrait, you really want to start it. As again, assuming you want to take it to a, a high polish, a, a clean, realistic finish with details, you want to start it nice and loose. You want to start it as an impressionist painting and then build up the details on top of it, right? Because the structure has to be the underpinning for the painting. Again, you walk back 25, 30 feet where all of the details go away. What's left is what matters. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a great point. And um, another question here was, so we talked a little bit about kind of the ugly phase or working, you know, you work an hour and a half and really two hours is the mark where everything kind of comes together. Um, how can students know that they're moving in the right direction?